We'll start with the prayers. Om Sahana Bhavato Sahana Bhunakto Sahaviryam Karabhavahai Tejasvi Navadita Vastuma Vidvishavahai Om Shanti 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 Panchadasi, chapter 3. That's what we are studying now. And uh, we have finished 16 verses of this chapter. What have we covered so far in these 16 verses? From verse number 1 to 12, we have seen what are the five koshas? And the teacher, the acharya, negates the five koshas as our real self. The main reason is they are changing, they are not permanent. That is the fundamental reason. Our body is changing, our mind is changing, pranas are changing. Our happiness keeps on changing, ananda, it keeps on changing. There are gradations in our happiness which we enjoy in this world. According to Vedanta, Anything which has got modification or a change, it cannot be the reality. This is a fundamental law of Vedanta. Anything which is changing cannot be the reality. For the changing nature, there has to be a substrate. And our quest for knowledge, our quest for the truth, is to find out the real substratum for this body and mind. And the scriptures say that the same substratum is for the entire universe. So as you try to know your own real nature, you will not only re realize your own nature, but you will also realize the nature of the entire universe. That is how Vedanta and the scriptures, they come into our life and we all begin our spiritual journey. Journey to from where we started, journey to where we will end after leaving this body in this transactional world. So the five koshas are Annamaya Kosha, Pranamaya Kosha, Manomaya Kosha, Vijnanamaya Kosha, Anandamaya Kosha. They are from a gross body level up to a thought level, emotional level, subtle level, causal level. Generally, we divide the, our body into gross body, subtle body, and causal body. The five koshas can also be grouped into any of these three bodies. We have seen this before when we studied the five koshas. Generally, the annamaya kosha is the gross body, which is visible to the sense organs. The subtlety of the mind cannot be seen by the sense organs. 
it is known by another principle which exists in this body, which is called as the Sakshi principle, the awareness principle. So subtle body consists of subtle elements and the three koshas which go into the subtle body are the pranamaya, manomaya, vijnanamaya. So we have covered four koshas, annamaya, gross body, pranamaya, manomaya, vijnanamaya. They all come under the subtle realm. For those who have studied the Tattva Bodha, you will remember that there is a process called as Panchi Karana, which happens to the five elements. The gross body is from the tamasic aspect of Maya and it is after the Panchi Karanam process. That means the subtle elements are converted into gross elements by a process, by a process of combination which is almost like nuclear physics. So the elements, they combine together and then they form the gross body, gross world, which is seen by the, which is experienced, perceived by the subtle elements. The subtle organs are the mind and the sense organs and the prans. The subtle elements are basically before the panchi karana, before grossification, they are at the subtle level itself, before the grossification. This cannot be seen by the eyes. Neither the pranas, neither the uh, mind, the sense indriyas, we are talking about the indriyas, not the goal accounts. So the subtle body, as I said, is the one which is responsible for the three koshas. The last kosha is called as Anandamaya kosha, which is the causal body, which is called as avidya, ignorance. Because in that state, we don't know anything. Neither we know the body, neither we know the world. But we exist. So what the scriptures tell us is that don't look at the realm of the transactional field which is called as Vyavaharika Satyam. The Vyavaharika Satyam is the field of science. Vedanta comes in and says there is another higher realm. Beyond this realm of transactions, there is a higher realm which is called as Paramartika. So, from verse number 1 to 12, we have seen the transactional Vyavaharika Satta. From verse number 13 to 28 and beyond up to verse number 34 or 36. So 13 to 36, we are talking about the higher realm, which is called as Paramartika Satya, which is the focus of the scriptures. It is the focus of Panchadasi also. All the chapters, they deal with the Paramarthika Satya. You must differentiate the two very clearly in your mind because unless you do this, you will not understand 
these verses. If you have not understood this, please clarify at the end of the talk. I will go through this again with you. You can, if you have any doubts, you can ask me on this matter of Vyavaharika Satyam and Paramarthika Satyam. Paramarthika Satyam means absolute reality. Vyavaharika Satyam means our perceptual world of the five sense organs and the five sense objects. So the world doesn't consi consist only of these five sense objects. It consists of a higher realm, which is called as Sat Chit Ananda. Satyam Jnanam Anantam. These are the three words you should always remember whenever we are talking about our real nature. During all the contemplations and uh, uh, meditations, we always focus on the higher realm. We learn to drop the lower realm and then focus all our energies, the mental energy which we have. We try to transcend this transactional reality and move into a totally different realm in which the Triputi doesn't exist. Triputi means what? The knower, known, and the knowing instrument. These three are not there in the higher realm. Very, very important fact you should know. There is no knower. There is no known object. And there is no knowing instrument. But yet, that higher state can be known because it is self-evident, self-effulgent consciousness. So that is, in short, what we have done so far. And where we are now is we are learning the jnanam or the consciousness aspect out of the three terms, the first thing which, which the Vidyaranya Swami takes for analysis is our nature, which is called as jnanam. In very simple terms, jnanam means awareness, consciousness, knowledge, pure knowledge. And how do we try to understand this is what Acharya, uh, Acharya is now explaining from 13 to 28. There are 16 verses on Jnanam. There are six verses on Satyam. There are two verses on Anantam. Satyam, Jnanam, Anantam. Even in Shankaracharya, when he writes a commentary on this in Taitriya Bhashyam, he also spends a lot of time on the Jnanam aspect. Satyam aspect he covers in a, in a few paragraphs, one or two paragraphs. But Jnanam he covers, he writes four or five pages of Bhashyam. Commentary on the word Jnanam. And Anantam is not so much. So Vidyarana is following the same style as the Bhashya, as Shankaracharya. For those who want to know more and go into very deeper analysis of this Satyam Jnana Manantam, I would recommend a study of chapter 2 of Taitri Upanishad, Brahmananda Valli. And if you have a chance, you should try to go into the Shankaracharya's Bhashya. That is where you will find the biggest depth. And our mind and our intellect equipment needs this logical reason to go deeper into our real nature. 
just by hearing you may not be hearing means just by listening to the upanishadic mantras you may not be able to go so deep but when you analyze them reason them out put objections and give answers to that then what happens is you are able to get more strength in your mind to delve deeper into your personality and when you go deeper the chances of you reaching your goal are very high because there is nothing else all the saints and sages in india they have depended on they have depended on shankaracharya's bhashyam of the 10 upanishads to go and understand the reality which we are also trying to do now in the saturday classes i'm taking the upanishads all the 10 upanishads 12 upanishads we are covering and now in these wednesday classes we are going into deeper study of those upanishads with this short introduction let me now jump straight into the 17th verse which we would like to start today these verses up to verse number 28 are all to do with jnanam or they are all telling us how to discover this consciousness in ourselves each verse from verse number 13 onwards till 28th verse is teaching us 16 verses are teaching us how we can learn about this nature of ours it is our own nature we you know we have to learn what is this nature how can i realize this is these are the verses which is called as verses for self realization entire verse right from 13 to 36 all of them are all self realization verses because they are all talking about satyam jnanam anantam which is a definition of atma definition of brahman let's see what the 17th verse is ye nedam janate sarvam ye nedam janate sarvam tat ke nanye na janatam साधन he says how can you talk about knower of this consciousness which is the knower of the entire universe so the first thing we should learn from this verse is there is a consciousness there is a chaitanyam principle which is the knowing factor not only for this body and this world which i am enjoying with the limited body and sense organs i can only see a limited small portion of the world but the scriptures tell us that the same consciousness which is illumining the sense organs and the mind in this body is the illuminator for all the human beings and the creatures living beings there is the same life factor the same illuminating factor in the entire universe when it is referring to the entire universe that being cosmic being which will know the entire universe is called as ishwara we are all jivas small beings with small knowledge ishwara or god or omniscient hiranyagarbha is nothing else but 
cosmic being. That cosmic being has not only this universe, this Brahmanda, they call it one Brahmanda, there are thousands of Brahmandas. And today in our meditation, we are going to see the nature of that Brahman, which is only this, the, what we see in uh, the, the cosmos, the whole cosmos is only a part of that, small insignificant part of that Brahman, Brahman or totality or reality. We call it reality. So here the question is asked by Acharya, is there another knower for this consciousness? which is knowing everything, which is knowing, which is knowing my mind, is there another consciousness which knows this consciousness? The mind, the instruments, the sense organs can only know the objects of the world because they are designed like that. They cannot know the self which is behind the mind and the sense organs. That is what is being described here. Mind and sense organs can know the objects. What are the objects? Five sense objects, Shabda, Sparsha, Rupa, Rasaganda. These are for the five sense organs, there are five sense objects. That is what we call it as world. And when these five sense organs interact with the five sense objects, that is what we call it as transactional reality, transactional satta, existence. Whereas there is a higher order which is called as paramarthika satta. That paramarthika satta is called as satyam jnanam ananda. That jnanam that conscious principle. Why is it consciousness? Because in this world we see that there is the world of five elements is only all jadam. Jadam means inner. It cannot know anything. A stone, a wall, a table, uh, all these are jadam. So what is it which makes the difference between the table, body, uh, uh, all this and the reality is, the reality is consciousness principle. And how do we know this exists? It can, we know this only from the scriptures, only from the Vedas. There is no science textbook which tells us that there is some higher principle called as consciousness, which is the substratum for the whole universe. There is no text which tells you in the objective world, the sources which belong to the objective world, which is the five sense organs and the field of science. But the subjective science, the source is the Veda. Pradhanik Upanishad, there is a section, there is a chapter called as Maitreyi Brahmana. This is a quotation from Maitreyi Brahmana, the second chapter. Very, very, uh, uh, very important mantra. Tatkena kam pashe, tatkena kam jigre, tatkena kam rasaye, tatkena kam Bhivadite, tatkena kam shunya, tatkena kam mandita, tatkena kam svishet, tatkena kam vijaniya. This is a central portion of this mantra. Vidyaranya is just quoting this mantra in this verse. The knower which is responsible for the seeing, hearing, touching, smelling, activities of the sense organs, that is the karanam. 
Who can know this Karanam? By this question, what he means is there cannot be any cause for, there cannot be a seer of consciousness. Because the consciousness is the substratum on which the entire transactional field is based on. This is what is taught by Yagnavalkya to his wife in this verse. Therefore, the Upanishad says that the only way to know this consciousness is keep dropping everything which you are, you are able to perceive. And by what? Neti, neti. Not this, not this. Again and again, drop. Drop this. Drop this objective world. When you have dropped the entire objective world, whatever remains is take it as your nature. That is your self. So neti neti is a very important principle in Vedanta to arrive at our real personality. So even in meditation, you can use this mantra and say, whatever I'm perceiving, whether it is the sense organs, the forms of the sense organs, from the eyes, we get the forms. From the ears, we get the sounds. So when I sit in meditation, what I can do? Eyes will say, neti, neti. It is not this, it is not this. I am not this, I am not this. This is a very beautiful meditation. Very easy meditation also. What will happen when you sit in when you sit? You'll get memories. You'll get thoughts. You'll because of vasanas. Some repeated actions you have done, therefore, that whatever you have done, it will come as thoughts. When the thoughts come, you say, This is not me. I am not the thought. I am not the thought. Neti neti. Just keep on negating the thoughts. So this is how Yagnya Velkya, very, very great teacher of the Brahadanaka Upanishad, he, he teaches his wife. His wife wanted to know what is the source of immortality. Because you say you are in search of immortality. The wife is very clever. She says, I have seen the world. There is nothing which is permanent here. So what is the use of running after the world? Can you teach me something which is immortal? Then Yagnya Valkya tells Maitri that this world is nothing but it is the five sense organs interacting with the five sense objects. That's all this whole world is. Any day, any time, you can experiment this truth. What am I experiencing? You ask this question to yourself. You will come to this basic truth. My sense organs are interacting with the sense objects. I hear a beautiful sound, music, music which is played in my mobile. My sense organs are perceiving it, hearing it. I see a nice picture. My eyes are seeing the form and color. I touch a flower. I smell a flower. Again, it is an object for the sense organ. Throughout our transactional world, time during the day, uh, daytime, during our waking hours, we are only dealing with this. This is what is called as Vyavaharika Satya. Beyond this is this consciousness. You must, you see, in these verses, which I said, you apply the teaching to yourself. Then only you will have transformation of your own personality. 
from a fearful, mortal, egocentric personality, you will be transformed into a cosmic reality. That is the benefit of this study of Panchadasi. Don't you want to achieve that? Go and study this 15 chapters of Panchadasi. You will end up into a totally different realm. Never has the mind gone into that depth. And when it goes into that depth, you will discover fulfillment in life and immortality in life. There is no, nothing which is permanent except this higher realm, which is always there. It was there before the birth of the body. It is there now. It will be there when the body drops. Emotions like love, hate, kindness, jealousy, anger, these are also objects of the Sakshi, of consciousness. How do you know your emotions? How do you know that I am happy today? I am sad today? How do you know? What is the knowledge principle which reveals that? That is called as Chaitanya. That is what is called as Jnanam. The three avastas, this is, you are climbing the ladder of the realm now. Our consciousness has got three realms in which it experiences, waking, dream, sleep. And all these three states belong to the mind, which that mind is known by this consciousness. This Chaitanya principle is the knower of the mind. In sleep, we know nothing. Nothing means what? It is also an object of knowledge. So can you see how deep we are going now? We are not only looking at this waking state of Triputi, where there is knower, known, and knowing instrument. That is what is called as Vyavaharika Satyam. Beyond this, there is a sleep state. There is a dream state. Dream state is nothing where it is semi-active mind. Where it is only the projection of the mind, there are no sense organs which are involved. That is also an object of knowledge for this consciousness. Then what happens in the sleep state? In the sleep state, the mind is totally blank. It has gone to rest. In that restful state also, what is the knowledge I have? I know nothing. I experience nothing. I know nothing means it is an ignorant state which is revealed by consciousness. If you are able to reach this level of consciousness, that is what is called as jnanam in this section. Now, this satchit ananda is beyond the five koshas, and that is our that is what we are reaching. That is the goal. Ena idam sarva vijanati tam kena vijaniya. That light by which we know the entire cosmos, what other light can illumine that light? That is what is, what is the teaching here. The answer is what? There is nothing else beyond this pure light of consciousness. That sakshinam jnana sarupam. That Sakshi knower, who can know that, means what? Nobody can know the consciousness. You can only say, I am the consciousness. You cannot say, I know consciousness. I knew when I was in meditation. Now I don't know the consciousness. You can never say. Because consciousness is always there. 
the senses mind are sadhana the instruments they are antar and bahis ranga sadhana instruments which can lead you outside for knowledge is the senses the mind can go inward and look at look at emotions i mean sakshi can illumine your instrument called as the mind but they all have very limited capacity we must remember this our sense organs are extremely limited very very limited a snake can see beyond the ultraviolet you know there, there are the seven colors it can see it can see beyond ultraviolet we can't see beyond a certain range similarly some animals and creatures can hear sounds which we can't hear at different decibels so what a human being can really see and enjoy in this world is very very small there are creatures living in the, in, in in the ocean which can see and hear and experience so many different things which we can't the self has no color form taste smell sound touch this self is what is called as jnanam i'm going to give you certain quotations here very important quotations from these upanishads katha upanishad talks about this self as something which is a shabdam a sparsham a roopam it has got no sound it has got no touch it has got no form it is without decay without taste without smell that means the sense organs cannot perceive atma this higher reality the sense organs have no scope at all that is why we have to depend on the shastra and understand yes there is a higher realm which is the pramanam the source of knowledge is the scriptures the self is to be realized as an as existing and as it really is and it is self evident swami chinmayananda used to give this example and i have quoted this also many times through a torch light if the torch light wants to know what is the brand whether it is everedy brand or is it dura cell which is inside the torch it can never it can never know it because suppose you remove the battery or open the battery to see the torch light to see that the light is gone so similarly our sense organs if they try to go deeper inside they cannot see they will not be there is no there is no uh, bridge for the sense organs of the mind to know the atma because it is going into another realm you see vedanta deals with the higher realm of existence it does not deal with the vyavaharika world it will explain srishti sthiti layam but the real focus the purpose of vedanta is to reveal the higher realm which is known as satyam jnanam anand so we can't dissociate the subject from object in the realm of the known we have to go to the higher realm we have to go to the other stage to understand you see what happens in the waking state is the subject consciousness and the objects they are all very very mixed up i if i try to analyze myself the consciousness in the waking state alone 
it will not be possible. You will have to use the Shastra, which goes to the other three states. That is why Mandukya Upanishad goes to analyze the dream state and the sleep state, and then say what lies beyond these three states is consciousness. It is Turiya Atma. Next verse, 18th verse. Saveti Vedyam Tat Sarvam Saveti Vedyam Tat Sarvam Na Anyatasya Asti Vedita Na Anyatasya Asti Vedita Vidita Avidita Bhyam Tat Vidita Avidita Bhyam Tat Pratak Bodha Swarupakam Prathak Bodha Swarupakam. So, what is the nature of this consciousness? It is revealer of both known and unknown, both knowledge and ignorance. That is the beauty of this consciousness. All the other lights which we see in the world, the sunlight, the light of the bulbs, they can only reveal what is outside. It cannot reveal ignorance. Whereas the light of Sakshi, it reveals to you that you don't know Russian language. Somebody asks you, do you know Russian language? Do you know Japanese language? Do you know Chinese? Do you know uh, Korean? No, I don't know. What, what reveals that is this Sakshi. This is one of the features of the pure self. Self knows all that is knowable. How, when the self, the pure consciousness, illumines the mind, and the mind illumines the sense organs, the sense organs can illumine all the objects. This is how it happens. All the noble objects. What are the noble objects? Noble objects are the five sense objects. And what lies beyond them? What lies behind my uh, behind my back? I don't know. How do you know you don't know? That is because of consciousness. The mind cannot say I don't know. Mind will say yes. Yeah, yeah. But it is not the pramanam for absence of knowledge, which is ignorance. Svetashvartara Upanishad says, He who resides at the body of nine gates, the nine doors, he is the master of the whole world, both animate and inanimate. That means more. That Sakshi principle which is there in this body, I told you there are two principles in this body. One is the ego, I, which is the pramata, which claims that this body is me. There is another I, which is the higher I, which is called as the Sakshi I, which never comes in the uh, realm of transactions. It is always present. It will always bless the ego I. And that is the real master. And that is the master I should try to understand. That is what is called as jnana. The, the nature of that master is consciousness. The same Svetaswadhar Upanishad also says in the very next mantra that that Sakshi has no hands, no feet, no eyes, no ears. But it is a knowing principle. It is the knowing principle which none of the sense organs of the mind can know. Again and again, all the Upanishads will reveal this fact. Keno Upanishad also talks about the same principle. What speech cannot reveal, but what reveals the speech? I'm speaking now. What is revealing the speech? It is the consciousness. That alone is called as Brahman. 
not what people worship. What people worship is only a stepping stone. But the real, real worship is of a jnani. That is why in Lord Krishna says, jnani is the highest devotee. Because he is one with me. He knows that I am in him. Awareness can't be made as an object of knowledge. It is in and through all objects. Like space pervades all the objects in creation. This consciousness is higher. It's more subtler than space also. Unless it is there, then only this entire world is illumined. It is known. Objects are content of consciousness. Contents can't know the container. Consciousness is the container in which we experience the entire world of objects. Every day, not today, not yesterday, every day, all our lives, all our births, in all our births, in different, different bodies, we have been born in the same world. And we have experienced the world, but never could we understand the nature of this awareness. It is now, after coming into Panchadasi, we are going to such depths of our own personality. The realm is of objects and the realm is of subject. When it comes to the realm of subject, we are talking about the Shastra. When it is the realm of objects, then it will be dealing with the mind and the senses. That is what is the essence of this verse 18. A quick revision, uh, I'll just touch upon uh, a few points we have studied so far. We are talking about the subject, not the object of knowledge. We are talking about the sakshi which knows the mind and the sense organs. There is no knower of sakshi. There is no second knower of consciousness. The senses, mind and the self. What, are the, what is the basic difference? Through the senses, I know Shabda Sparsha, Rupa Rasa, Gandha. They are the objects of the sense organs. Panchi Karana Pancha Mahabhut. I have explained this Panchi Karana process in Tatho Goda. These are all sense organs which are designed to see the sense objects. What about mind? Mind is full of thoughts, emotions, concepts. And who illumines the mind? Sakshi or the self. And who illumines the self? No one illumines the self. It is self-luminous. Swayam Jyoti. This is what we have studied. And the root cause of all this is why we do not know our real self is that is because we have avidya. We have ignorance about our nature. Ignorance about the objective world is called as ajnanam. It is not mula avidya. It is tula avidya. Another word which is used is tula. E-O-O-L-A. Suppose I say I don't know what's there for dinner, that is a superficial ignorance. I don't know Russian language, I don't know Japanese, these are all superficial. But if I don't know my own self, this self, which is a substratum, that is what is called as mula vidya, which is deeper. That ignorance, self-ignorance, is illumined in the deep sleep state. And that is what is called as the sleeper eye. I knew, I know, I knew nothing in deep sleep. Nothing means what? It is concentrated maya. It is homogeneous principle of homogeneous ignorance principle. At the Vishti level, it is called as avidya. 
at the samashti level it is called as maya this ignorance these are all technical terms just keep it in mind you see you may not learn you may not know, uh, know all these technical terms because as we study slowly slowly you will learn these technical terms it will come to you don't worry if you don't understand some of these technical terms but eventually you will understand they are the means to go and understand the real nature that's all consciousness is not gross subtle or causal universe it is the subject who causes all the experiences it is this consciousness that is the main cause okay so that is a small revision of our previous sessions verse number 19 i will introduce i'll see whether i can finish it yes i think i can finish it let us finish this and then we'll stop for the day बोधे अभवो योधे अभवो ये न कथ न जायते तम कथम बोजे शास्त्र तम कथम बोधे शास्त्र गोष्ठम नर सकृति Here, Vidya Ranya is asking a question to explain that consciousness is the container, and all the objects and the beings which we experience are the content of this consciousness. Big, big consciousness, big in size, mega consciousness in which all this whole cosmos is being seen. how can a man teach scriptures to one who is only in the form but who is so dull that he doesn't experience and says i don't experience consciousness i don't know what is consciousness see knowing involves two things one is the object of knowing and the second is the awareness principle awareness is the container in which we see all the objects even my body which i see right now it is in the satchit ananda principle i am seeing the body the objects are contents in consciousness so you can never say see well, well, the what he is trying to say is vidyaran is trying to tell us how to know this consciousness you can never say i don't know conscious i don't think there is consciousness because i don't experience it it is this this consciousness because of which you are telling this that is what he is trying to tell us consciousness experienced as vishaya and vishayin the object is called as vishaya vishayin means the knower self is ever experienced directly as aparoksha aparoksha tattva aparoksha tattva means what i am that consciousness that is all you can say you cannot say i am seeing consciousness i am hearing consciousness because it is not true it is not pratyaksham pratyaksham like objects like shabda sparsha roopa rasagandha it is not an object in all these verses right from verse number 13 onwards what vidya ranya trying to say is never try to objectify consciousness in your meditation just say i am that consciousness i am the pure self even during our normal waking hours if you want to if you want to really abide in your consciousness the only way is aham brahma asmi aham chaitanya roopa asmi that's all just tell this to yourself you will see how the mind becomes so peaceful why because you have learned what is this consciousness you have the knowledge of this consciousness through the scriptures through panchadasi only you will be able to come and and use this term aham brahmasmi aham chaitanyasmi only you because you know what is this self 
This self is self-luminous. We have seen in chapter 10 of the Panchandisi before, several verses were there which explained that uh, example of the, the theater and the dance and all that. If you remember, you can connect it. All Vyavahara is because of this consciousness. It is this consciousness which is illumines the moon, the sun, the stars. Na tatra suryo bhati na chandra tarakam. Remember that verse. In the sleep, that individual who experienced nothing and who says on waking that there was nothing, he can only make this statement if this consciousness had illumined the thought which was an experience in the sleep state, I know nothing. So the absence of the objects of the world is also known by this container consciousness. Let me uh, just introduce this 20th verse and then we will continue. I'll give the explanation next week. But uh, I just want to introduce this verse so that you know what we will study next week. Jivha ma astina veti yukti. Jivha ma astina veti yukti. Lajjaye keva lam yatha. Lajjaye keva lam yatha. Nabudhyate maya bodha. Nabudhyate maya bodha. Bodha vya itita drishi. So here again, Vidyaranya again is giving another example. In the previous said, he said if a person says, I don't know consciousness, what it is, he is, he is, he is, he is not knowing this nature of consciousness. Like what? Suppose there is a person and he is talking. And he says, I don't think I have a tongue. A person is talking. But he doesn't, he says, I don't think, I don't think I have a tongue. So similarly, the person who is who is consciousness himself, if he says, I don't know what is consciousness then it is a lack of knowledge of what this consciousness is. That's all. That is what Vidyarana is trying to say. It is shameful to say, I don't have a tongue when you, are, when you are speaking. So similarly, it is shameful to say, I do not know consciousness. I must have the knowledge of it. Because it is in consciousness you are speaking, you are doing, you are transacting. Your body is seen. Without this consciousness, the body is not seen, the tongue cannot be heard. Do you experience the statement you are saying? That is what we should ask. Do you experience? I am aware of what I speak. That awareness is what is called as consciousness. Can you hear you speaking? Yes, I can hear. How do you hear that? That is because of consciousness. So what you have is delusion ignorance about consciousness. This knowledge of consciousness can happen in a fraction of a second. And this consciousness is not young or old. It doesn't become old. When I was five years old, the consciousness was five years old. When I am now 60 years old, my consciousness also has become 60 years old. No, not like that. Consciousness remains the same. Five years, 10 years, 20 years, 50 years, 40 years, no change. So what we have to do is ever obtaining fact is what we have to learn to claim. We have to wake up to the self and that is what is 
uttered by a teacher in Chandogya Upanishad, Tattvamasi, you are that consciousness. We have to realize this consciousness by Shravanam. By Mananam, we clear the doubts and by Nididhyasanam, we drop the habitual notions. And our problem is, it is the ego which keeps on doubting this. It never cooperates. Till this ego drinks this joy of the Upanishads, then it will get fulfilled and then it will accept, yes, I am the pure self. Anyway, there is a story of Arunagiri Nada. You can just read it. It is uh, 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 basically, uh, I, 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 uh, th 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 there is a story which says, this is Sumairo means uh, in Tamil, it says that this Arunagiri Nada, Nada uh, he, he wanted to, he was a great, uh, devotee of Lord Muruga. Now, he wanted to realize what is this nature of Lord in himself. He tried his best, but he couldn't. Then, one day, he, he, he realized that it is his ego which was the obstacle. And then that, that higher power enabled him to say, quieten the ego. Let the ego be quiet. And then you see what happens. Then what he realized was that Lord which he was searching it was shown to him in a split second. He realized that in the same heart, the ego was there, the Sakshi was there. But because the ego was strong, it never allowed the Sakshi to come up. But when he quietened the ego, what happened? Sakshi revealed itself because it is always there. You falsify your mind, the ego, and this realization is within you and you can know yourself. Our whole teaching of all the chapters is sumaira, means keep quiet. We are teaching our ego to remain quiet again and again in every chapter. Vidyaranya says, quieten the ego eye, quieten the ego eye. Every time it is rising up in making state, Quieten it, quieten it. Again, you say, and automatically the pure consciousness will get revealed. The I minus the ego I is the truth. Consciousness reveals itself without any doubt. That is what happens when the ego drops. That's what. Uh, Vidyaranya Swamiji is trying to tell in every verse, realize your consciousness, stop your ego to function. Okay, we'll continue with the 21st verse next week. Oh, oh Namada. Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachade Purnasya Purnamathaya Purnameva Vasishade Oh, shine.
शांति 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 ओके सो दैट वाज टुडेस पंचदशी सेशन so shanmugam is uh, unmuted everybody so if you want to ask any questions you can unmute yourself and then ask does uh, anybody yeah go ahead uh, sure. deepak yeah no this is uh, just a side question but uh, yeah. rising out of what we did today yes what i understand is that the consciousness is really agnostic to the identity and form that we have as mind and body yes that uh, while jivas are separate uh so called uh you know the somni jivas that's correct consciousness in me and you and all are one is exactly one yes it's one consciousness one, one consciousness therefore when we uh, when we die uh, what gets reincarnated is the subtle body is the subtler form of the three bodies but it is still an object exactly it is still an object of consciousness it is not the subject and that subtler of that the subtlest of all the three bodies have uh, carry with them certain vasna certain yes. aspects and and uh, which when they take rebirth they come in a new form and identity that's correct but, but the cons- but it is almost as if that the consciousness is like the electricity yes uh without which this uh subtle body gross body and all the bodies in it uh can cannot function without this consciousness that's correct but, this, but what it means is that when i uh but when it says that i am going to be a jeevan mukta in this very life it means that there will be a nanoseconds where i lose the sense of identity and become one with this electricity i would call or like a consciousness which yeah. is same you know we all can lose for that moment so and but it is and then we go back to the the world with this consciousness at the substrate is that what it means i mean that's what you're being saying today when you talk yeah. to the you see uh, you are saying it's just a nanosecond with reference to the body and its own experiences of life but when it you when you are talking from the consciousness level there is no nano, nanosecond it is so, so, you are already merged with it and yeah. as far as you are concerned you will never forget like today you will never forget i am a human being i am a man you will never forget i am the conscious being that's all for so, you so, for you jeevan mukti is here you already have you see the is What is what is the difference between uh, a jnani who has got the knowledge but who has not got it as a vasana now you see you have just got the knowledge you have got the jnana but it has not become a vasana in you the moment it becomes a vasana then you are on the path to becoming a jivan mukti only when the vasana comes i am the pure consciousness then manoksha uh, nasha happens mind gets destroyed there is no more mind left for you mind is act, will still act in the world but it will not it will be like a roasted seed it will not have it will not remember that it is doing something it will it will always remember that vasana will be very strong in you i am the pure atma i am that pure atma that is what is called as brahma vasana brahma bhava that transformation takes time you see because of the doubts which our mind throws out our mind is throwing up doubts because of impurity in the mind it is a samshaya is what samshaya is nothing but it is just a projection of a, a thought coming in my mind is it really true i am consciousness suppose you accept it as the truth then what will happen is you will not talk about any other anything else you will just say i am free there is no more you are already a jeevan mukta here and now that is what happens so a slight difference is 
only that when you take yourself as the body, all these thoughts will come to you. When you take yourself as the consciousness, all this will be blank. There is no more body, there is no more thoughts, there is no more any time principle because See, you, what happened, the, the, the description of consciousness is so beautiful in the Upanishad and it can take you directly and immerse in you into that consciousness. You see? So, so consciousness has, uh, is uh, when I merge with the consciousness or when I am the consciousness, I am the supreme intellect. Yes, you are no, no more intellect. I am the see, Yeah, you see, consciousness means what? You are always knowledge, you know, jnanam. You see, jnanam uh, in Taitriya Bhashyam, okay, in, in Taitriya Upanishad Bhashyam, Shankaracharya uh, gives the explanation of jnanam and he says, jnanam can mean four things. It can mean karta, that means it is the jnata. Uh, jnanam can, is used in, with four derivations, which is called as virpati in Sanskrit. So jnanam can be used in scriptures. Jnanam is used as the jnata, the knower. Jnanam is also used as the known object. Jnanam can also be used as the knowing instrument. The same word Sanskrit Jnanam can be used in all the three. Jnata, Jnanam, and Nyaya. Instrument, the object, and the knower. What Shankaracharya says is, the Upanishad, when it reveals Jnanam, it is not talking of these three. Mm. It is talking of the knowing process. It is talking about the noun called as consciousness, which is, uh, which is, which is, which is called as Bhava with Vittihi. He calls it as Bhava. He calls it as uh, uh, jnanam means it is it is it is knowledge absolute. It is not triputi. It's not triputi. It is not triputi. Jnata, jnana. These three, they when they come together, it becomes the Vyavarika world. You see how deep Shankaracharya analyzes this. You see. He says, Vyavahara. So, so just here. Uh, yeah. No, if you understand this point correctly, you would have, you know, it will reach you to the ultimate uh, reality. Yes. So, so he says, transactional reality, reality is, is, is Triputi. Triputi, yes. Yes. Whenever you are having, when you are, you are in, uh, in, in uh, transaction, how do I know whether I'm in transactional reality or in absolute reality? Whenever the mind, whenever the knower, in the consciousness, there's no knowerhood. Very important point. I mean, I didn't realize this till I read this, uh, heard this Bhashya. Mm -hmm. In consciousness, there's no knowerhood at all. Knowerhood is there when the body is there, when the mind is there, when I'm interacting with the world, the sense so, organs. I've understood. So, so this knowerhood is not there in consciousness. Yes, it is not there. It is noun. It is uh, it is an absolute principle which is consciousness. That's all. In That's consciousness, it. there is no knowingness of the world. The knowingness of the world comes in only at the Vyavaharika level, not at the highest level. But but for Jivan Mukta, that that aspect happens when we when this when we when we sort of so in Vyavarika level, I am trying to be a... Yes. In Vyavarika level, I am always having the knowledge of Paramartika level. That's all. I am... You see, my status it remains the same consciousness in all the three states. 
I am the same pure awareness in waking, dream, and sleep. So, how do I differentiate the three states with reference to that state? That state of Turiyam or that pure consciousness is where I don't experience anything. Only awareness. Only pure awareness. And if you remember, if you know this definition of jnanam as pure awareness, you will accept when the Upanishad says, in the sleep state, you are pure awareness. And that is your nature. Accept it and then live your life in the waking state. That's all. It's a knowledge. You see, this bhashyam is very, very important when you want to go into deeper aspects of learning the scriptures. Very, very beautiful. And, uh, you know, it, even uh, 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 Panchadasi second chapter, when you come to that chapter, it will, you know, Vidyarana has a beautiful method of revealing the sat aspect. Existence. Very beautifully explained. Yeah, you know, he will explain, he will also, we'll, we'll go through that. So, am I clear, uh, Deepak? Yes. Uh, just, just to add, uh, yeah, I'm, like, I'm understanding. Yeah, I'm understanding. Let's yeah, okay, good, good, Deepak. Yeah, what is saying? No, no, the, I'm just, uh, just to add, uh, we can just say like when the river uh, it merges with the ocean, it loses its identity. It becomes one with the consciousness. Yes. It is something like that, Jivatma and Paramatma. So there is no separate identity. Yes. Yeah. It is yeah. an adi addition to what Deepak, uh, your question is, Venkatesh is saying that river, the, you know, the merge, uh, the merging yes. has already happened. Yes, it's like water to ocean. Or, you Correct, know, yes. Yeah. You have realized that I am the water. I am no longer the wave or ocean. Yeah. I am the water principle. I am the consciousness principle. I am the pure existence principle. I am just always there. Yeah. Recently lost uh, two very good friends. Yeah, and um, and you know I've just been trying to sort of reconcile to the fact that one will not be able to see them or be with them or, or some memories yeah. will remain, but they are not there in physical form. Yeah, and the families are grieving also because all of them uh, died very suddenly. You know, one died while playing tennis instantaneously; the other died having a neurogenerative disease within ten days of that. He died, passed away very sudden, unexpected. So this whole thing of uh, this uh, this consciousness being one and physical form being many, yeah. but all held together by this one electricity or one consciousness. One pure, pure, one pure yeah. and Correct. This, yes. And uh, therefore, uh, and that whatever happens even in the transmigration of that subtle body happens in the realm of this consciousness Always there. It can't yes. Yes. It is. It is. And all right. the worlds where the so-called spirits, uh, as per the Hindu dharma, they remain there till they migrate. Also, are uh, sort of subtler forms of uh, levels of uh, existence, but again living in consciousness. Yes. But at, at a higher level, at pragmatical level, we are, we are all. They're all one. I mean, there's nothing, no, no differentiation. There's no differentiation. There's yeah, you see, uh, Deepak, in chapter two of Panchadasi, there is a beautiful section there which will come. And there, Vidyaranya says that we all have the today the notion that body has existence, this space has got existence. But this is what our eyes are seeing, what we are experiencing. But what the truth is, in existence, space is there. In existence, the body is there. In existence, the, the, the rivers, the, 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 the whole cosmos is there in this existence. So the moment I shift my vision from the body and the mind to this pure existence, then my whole uh, uh, life changes. I will no longer be affected by the passing appearances which come and go. Beautiful, passing appearances. These are, all, these are all appearances, you know. 
from the higher level, they all are only appearances. And when we learn the scriptures, the more we fine tune our own thoughts to this type of thinking, then we will benefit out of the teaching. The benefit will come like how you are today getting the benefit. You see, you, today when you say that these are all appearances, the, it is the benefit of the study. That is what is the, the palm of the, the entire study we are doing. Our mind is able to think in this direction. And the more my mind thinks, what Vidyaranya says clearly is, the doubts will go away and this jiva bhava will go away and what will remain is, I am the Satchin Anand. Again and again, let the thought come that this whole waking state I'm experiencing is like a bubble. It just comes, it's just there for a few hours, 24 hours in a day is, is like a bubble. It just goes away. Again, then the bubble comes tomorrow morning. Again, it will go away. Again, the bubble. In this, this, in this bubble, what can I, what, if I hold on to the bubble as a reality, then I am ignorant. I am the reality in which the bubble is coming and going. Let that transformation happen. That is the final realization of the self. Sure. Again and again, Panchadasi will repeat this message. I am, you know, in the third chapter, what he is trying to say is, you are the Satchidananda. You see, we, you are not the five koshas, you are Satchidananda. In Satchidananda, the five koshas are appearing and disappearing, manifesting and unmanifesting, as per the law of cosmos. This is Ishwara. This is where the Maya principle comes in. You see, the Maya is the power. The pure consciousness has that power called as Maya. In that Shakti, this whole cosmos is manifesting and manifesting. The moment you are, you become, first of all, you become aware that I am that pure Satchit. Then you become aware of this Maya principle. And then what you say, everything else is dependent on this Maya Shakti. Because it is dependent on Maya Shakti, we say that is an mithya, it is appearance. This is the reasoning given by Vidyaranya in chapter 2. He says that again and again, let your minds go into this reasoning. That what the scriptures are giving me is not the transactional reality at all. That scriptures doesn't want to talk about the transactional reality because this is an appearance. It is, it is only a mithya. It wants to reveal the pure higher self again and again. The, it, the Upanishad is taking you higher, higher, higher. It wants you to drop the lower body, mind, intellect. Body, mind, intellect and the world, it wants you to drop. Allow it to drop. When you study the scriptures, you remember the main purpose of Vedanta, Upanishad is higher realm. The realm of Satchidananda. Again and again, let the mind dwell on that. Yeah, Shama, you have been waiting for a long time. <laughs> no, no, it's just so beautiful, so fascinating. And there is no other uh, recourse uh, uh, except to get this mayanam, isn't yes. it? Yes. So until we reach the realized state, yes. this is the only thing that we can do. Correct. We can't do anything else. You see, repeatedly, be, uh, repeatedly, repeatedly hear and listen. Yes. But I love this little one, which is, you know, which is what most of the time we are doing, isn't it? I have a tongue, but I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure I've got a tongue. I'm yeah. talking, but I'm not sure if yeah. I've got a tongue. So it is almost like we have the consciousness, but I'm not sure. Yes. You know? 
I'm not sure. So you are doubting that your own existence all Correct. You see, that is the that is a slap Vidya Ranya is giving us. It's wow. a very beautiful one, very, very yeah. nice one. Yeah. But this um, I loved your awareness is the container. All is coming and going the into the Jagrat, into the Swapna, into the Sushupti. Abidance in the self, the, however, Am Brahmasmi is the main principle. See the big and the small, the good and the bad, the sukha and the dukkha, the thoughts of duality, the turbulent emotions, the darkness and the light. Me the vikara rahit, the chaitanya, doesn't have any attributes, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and this ego self, you know, this is the war, you know, it's, I, I just find this as a real internal war, you know, this Sura, uh, Sura, Sura, you know, the Sura being the mind which tells me all this Upanishadic literature, you know, has to be the only truth. Yeah. And the Asura war, which is my sensory and the mind, all of that is constantly hitting me. And this, it is, it is a bit of a tragic uh, comedy here, you know, it is, it, it's a tragic comedy. Yes. There is a comedy of all that it is there, you know, how ridiculous it is that I have a tongue and I say I can't talk, isn't it? Yes. So, but this war is a real, very serious one. And I was, just while you were saying, and I was thinking, I can hold it no more. Lord, would you not take me into yourself? I can't fight this war no more. Should you not? It's actually a challenge to the Lord himself. Should you not take care of your own creation? Is it not you alone who has created this Vidya Maya, the knowledge, and the Avidya Maya, the ignorance, you know? So I, I just find it that it is just uh, too objectionable, you know, that, you know, he, he himself should create all this darkness and the light, and then you are left to try and go through this. Would you not grant me the only one prayer to hold my impulse of indiscretion? This is my only guilt, isn't it? That I, yeah. I can't discriminate, you know, all the time and right. therefore can't hold on to the consciousness. So what I wanted to know was that despite all the scriptural knowledge at some stage, not all, the only knowledge that one needs to know is that Brahma Satya. Yes. You know, everything else is false. That is the only knowledge to be known. Even for all, when it is realized by the Jivan Mukta, is it still a prarabdha, the time factor that you will not be able to, you know, finish that? Which means, even if you have realized, like through amazing, uh, you know, Nididhyasana and all that, and yeah. embracing the thought, even if you had all of that, when it will happen is determined totally by my prarabdha. Uh, in, in terms of the, see, yeah, this is a question. This I prarabdha have. is only given up to a junior student. Really? Yes. The, at the, at the, for a higher student, the prarabdha is out. It's no longer valid. Oh, that's very encouraging. Very encouraging. Yes. You see, for, <laughs> for, for a senior student, yeah. what the Upanishad is saying is, you are Nitya Mukta. You are ever liberated, and you realize that you are ever liberated. That's all. See, this is this, uh, this. The moment you get the knowledge or realization that the world's our, all our experiences, all our experiences are only appearances, they are not, they are not existent. You see, there are two things there is sat which is always existence, which is Satchidananda. There is something which is non-existent, which never exists. In between this category of existence and non-existence is this Mithya world. So Jagat, the whole Jagat, the moment you transform the Jagat and say this whole Jagat and its experiences is 
only a flash of imagination you may call illusion you may call you may call it whatever you mean you may name it as anything it is it is like the dream which which existed while it was existing yeah so at the gnana level it is fine when you have woken yeah. up the dream is no longer there correct correct the moment you are woken up to sachidananda the waking dream has gone there is no more waking left the waking is no it it he has just disappeared like the dream yeah but i was just thinking about like deepak ji's uh, you know uh, the recount which he was making about losing his two friends yes see now deepak ji he is obviously he's i mean i've heard him talk he's already so aware in his uh, spiritual knowledge isn't it yes. he, he is quite advanced in that so what i'm saying is that there is a time period that even although you may have all of the knowledge all of this thing even your own emotion of that grief that you have experienced yes. it is to be accepted yes you first accept yeah, you it. cannot say i yeah, should yeah. not feel no 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 you have to accept it while you are experiencing it you will say you have to believe that it is true yeah so he he should not really tell himself that um you know to allow that grief he has to have that grief yes the grief yeah. happens but over a period of time how does it go away because of the knowledge or the vasana of the scriptures which yeah, he has yeah. got Excellent. that will help him to come out of his sorrow correct correct so that and that is the same for that extreme joy as well yes. you know you yeah. you, so, you you can get elated in a marriage you know yeah yeah and Which then is okay it yeah. is okay yeah but the basic thing is the sorrow is is something which you experience but what the scriptures tell you is it's a passing phase so it will not affect the person so much yes it will not okay. affect the moment the reason is because you have of his vasana of the scriptures it will Wonderful. it will hold you see i don't like that word vasana by the way because i feel vasana is bad no, when you say vasana bhava, this is a positive like vasana bhava is, is brahma bhava is a positive it's vasana it is it is a, it's a, it's a, it is an impression which you are using to neutralize your other other problems yeah It's see this is gone so ingrained the vasana word na as bad negative neg is very bad change it to say i am having beautiful thoughts of my nature yeah so i like and i want to repeat that thought again and again i do not want to get a feeling of the miserable jiva i am suffering Excellent. that is wrong if i encourage that thought nip it in the bud again and again thank you thank you you know every day in the morning when i get up i ask my question how can i make this day happy today happy i am not bothered about yesterday i am not talking about tomorrow today how can i remain happy the only answer i get is if a bad th- if a thought comes where i where i can detect it and i can neutralize it with om then i have had a great day excellent excellent Okay. Anybody else has a question? I uh, mean, but Brahm Karne Vishnu Nihal Madhya. Yeah. Very nice. Interesting. Akshay is saying it's said by Upanishad one must be free from three vasanas: loka vasana, popularity, deha vasana, physical, shastra vasana, scriptures. Yeah. Uh, replace this by Brahma vasana. <laughs> okay you get rid of this but replace it by aham brahma asmi i am the pure satchid ananda i am whatever the scriptures are teaching me i take it as the truth i have heard quite a lot of scriptures so far even if i can remember that one or two things let me dwell on that pure nature and let me let my mind not keep on looking at the uh, looking at the uh, other uh, things which i don't have 
You see, the, why does the mind go back to this world? Because you feel you're not fulfilled. Tell yourself I'm fulfilled with that joy of scriptural, scriptural knowledge. This is the only thing which will give you fulfillment. There is nothing else. And we are really we are, we are, we are, we are, we are fortunate to have these type of uh, uh, scriptures available uh, you know, to us to dwell on them. Okay, anybody else has any other, any other remarks, anything? Uh, Panchadesi is a text which is uh, full of reasoning and uh, I'm going slow, taking two, three verses, two, three verses at a time. And, uh, but it is very deep. You see, see how deep we are talking about five koshas and now we are talking about jnanam and then there'll be five or six verses to talk about satya and two verses which will talk about ananta. And that will finish the three Upanishad analysis. <laughs> and in chapter two, he will talk about the five elements. How Panchabhutas can be analyzed to arrive at the same Satchidana. You see, he takes only one verse of Upanishad in the second chapter. And that is Sadeva Somyam Idam Agri Asit. And in that one verse, he writes 109 verses to explain. In the second chapter, 109 verses are trying to explain Sat. Only Sat. Here we are doing uh, about 20, 18 verses, 16 verses. Okay, so that is how Swami Vidyaranya, the, the Acharya, you know, he takes us and lifts us up, lifts us up and then says that the purpose of Upanishad is only talking about our nature as this pure self, that's all. Again and again, he hammers this point. The Upanishad is not talking about, he doesn't want to talk about the realm of our transactions, which is that karta, karma, karanam. No more this, I'm talking about Bhuma, Brahman. Yatra nanyat pashyati, nanyat vijanati, nanyat shunoti. Keep that one, I, I find that uh, verse extremely beautiful from Chandogya Upanishad 7th chapter. Very, very beautiful. It gives you straight, it tells you straight away, you just think of that aspect of yours. You cannot but be that Satchidananda. Okay. Thank you. Good night. Hario. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Hario. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.